One of Singapore's 13 public and private labs approved to run COVID-19 tests says it will conduct up to five times more tests over the next few weeks. The government aims to increase capacity to 40,000 a day. In this CNA exclusive, we find out what goes on behind the scenes at Parkway Laboratories as Singapore restarts. Before I do the test, I make sure that the UTM or the so-called universal transport medium is not expired and it's, it's not torn and there's no discoloration. So now, sir, I'm going to pre perform the procedure. Can you put down your mask and blow your nose? If you feel uncomfortable, you just raise your hand, okay? Tilt your head. Okay, I'm going to insert this inside the UTM. There's a tip over here. So what I'm doing here is I break the tip of the swap stick and cover it tightly. Then I'm going to double bag this using biohazard bag before I send to the lab. So each bag, I need to wipe it with the micro seed. Then we roll it this way, then seal. Take the second biohazard bag, put inside, wipe it again, roll, seal it. Then using the correct sticker, I'm gonna seal this biohazard bag with this sticker outside. Then I make sure that the red cap is standing, then place it on the canister provided. Again, wipe it with micro seed. Place inside the biohazard box. I wipe it again. Now this box is going to send to the lab. Once the primary sample has been labelled with the laboratory generated accession number, we will transfer 800 microlit of the sample into a secondary tube. This is also an area of great discipline where we, we need to practice good laboratory practices and good pipetting techniques in order to prevent cross-contamination of samples. After we complete pipetting the samples into the secondary container, we are placing the samples into the sealed container and bringing it outside to the Koba 6800 for testing. I am now going to load the samples into the machine. We are running the COVID-19 test using Roche Koba 6800. The test can take up to 94 samples in one batch and each batch takes approximately three and a half hours. COVID-19 PCR test, it's a bit unique in the sense that it depends on the swabbing for the samples itself. So accurate swabbing, which is proper technique in terms of how the swab is taken is crucial for the accuracy of the results. Secondly, it's also determined by the time taken before the swabs reaches the lab because obviously there's degradation of the swab, especially in the current heat. Third, we need to consider when the patient's disease or infection started. Having the swab taken too early or too late would also give a false negative result as a consequence of that. You will see behind me that we will have one Cobus machine, which is currently helping us to uh, perform 1,000 tests per day. 
and we have already installed another five machines which will come online very shortly in the next two to three weeks and that will add to another 4,000 testing capacity per day bringing us to a total of 5,000 tests per day. And Dr. Daniel Tan, Chief Executive Officer at Parkway Health Laboratory, joins us live now. Uh, Dr. Tan, thanks very much for joining us. Tell us a bit more uh, about how Parkway Labs uh, first began uh, conducting these tests in the first place. Uh, good evening, Glenn, and good evening, John. Uh, we started back in uh, March uh, this year, and it was thanks to a very great collaboration that we had with uh, ASTAR's uh, DXD Hub. Uh, at that time, in the early days of the COVID outbreak, uh, ASTAR had a kit that was readily available for us to onboard, and thanks to this great partnership, a uh, public-private partnership with them, uh, they onboarded us very early to start the test. Uh, soon after that, at the end of March, uh, the Roche Cobas machine that you saw in the earlier clip uh, had its reagents available, and we were quite fortunate that we had the machine uh, in place and we could uh, actually start ramping up uh, testing uh, very quickly after that. Uh, from the end of March onwards to present day. Dr. Chan, I want to ask this quick question. So the Health Ministry, we know earlier, reported 33 false positive cases. How do such errors actually occur and, and how do you avoid them, especially with the increased testing workload? Um, so it depends on the PCR platform that's being used. Um, we are using the, the roche Cobas system, which is a closed or all-in-one system. Uh, it's got a, a intuitive algorithm within the testing machine because it does the extraction and the PCR uh, both all in one, as you saw in the earlier clip. Uh, this algorithm actually generates the test result. So it is fairly uh, uh, easy to use. Uh, if I dare use the word idiot proof in that sense. Uh, with respect to the other testing methodologies, some of it is uh, a bit more laborious where you actually do have to uh, use certain manual techniques in terms of the pipetting, uh, as well as uh, looking at the calibration and calculation of what we call the cycle threshold value, which is actually the cutoff point, which uh, determines whether this is a positive or negative result. So again, getting this calibration uh, done correctly is actually very important to getting a good, accurate result. Uh, we've heard a lot about how test kits are in short supply, not just test kits, in fact, we've heard about components within those test kits being in short supply as well. Uh, how are you guys managing that situation? Uh, so the, the good question is uh, answered because we do need to diversify supplies. Uh, like what I mentioned earlier, we've been working very closely with local research agencies like ASTAR and DSO Laboratories, uh, who have been very supportive and ramping up their local production of these uh, PCR test kits. Um, we have also been relying on Roche and other major vendors. Uh, earlier, there's also the Kaijin extraction kit, um, which is suffering uh, global uh, demand because testing is, is you know, going through the roof uh, in many countries around the world. So again, the, the suppliers are not able to keep up with the demand. So again, diversifying the supplies is most important in terms of building up uh, testing resilience for our community. Dr. Tan, with the current lack of a vaccine at the moment, do you see mass testing becoming part of daily life, you know, because all the economies are starting to reopen in coming months? Um, it, it's got to be the only weapon that we have now in terms of uh, getting ourselves uh, prepared for future waves of uh, COVID infections. Um, until a vaccine comes uh, available, um, hopefully in the next few months or perhaps a year or so, um, this is testing remains the only mechanism that we can quickly identify uh, COVID infected uh, individuals, uh, isolate them, and break the transmission. Because ultimately, this is an infection that's highly contagious. And by identifying any individual that's uh, harboring the COVID, uh, coronavirus, we can actually break that chain of transmission uh, more so than you know what we're taking in terms of our daily precautions like uh, hand washing, face masks, social distancing, etc. So testing is what the WHO says. Test, test, test is really the only uh, strategy that all countries around the world have today uh, before new developments come out in terms of sharpening the diagnostic tools whereby we can actually perhaps uh, isolate uh, populations uh, in a more refined manner as well.
And as you accurately said, also, we have to be very mindful of our personal hygiene. Thank you so much for speaking with us this evening. We've been speaking with Dr. Daniel Tan, Chief Executive Officer at Parkway Health Laboratory.